Okay, uh, our next session on the heart is going to be talking about the coronary arteries. This is the arteries that are feeding the heart its oxygen. Just like any other muscle in the body is getting fed its oxygen, the coronary arteries have a name. These are the, the, the arteries of the heart, the coronary arteries. It's so important, it's not funny. The coronary arteries are incredibly important. And it won't be very long of a, of, a, of a statement. So here we go. We're going to be talking about the heart again. You like the way I make that heart? Okay. Ready? Coronary arteries. Coronary arteries. Coronary arteries. Here we go. You enjoying this? I want to leave. Okay. You know this. You know this uh, aortic valve. Right behind them are these two entrance ways. This is gonna. This is the entrance way into the coronary arteries. They're right behind the valve. When the I want you to remember this. The heart coronary arteries get fed not in systole like all the other muscles of the body but in diastole, when this valve shuts, because you remember when it opens up, it opens up like this, it blocks these two holes, and then when it shuts, it opens up, and that's where those two holes get exposed, and this is the entrance way into the coronary arteries, okay? The coronary arteries have a left and a right side. The left coronary arteries is the major one, the left coronary artery, and then it bifurcates into the left circumflex, artery, and then the left anterior descending artery. The left Circumflex artery will affect the posterior side of the left atrium and left ventricle. The posterior side. The, the left coronary artery is the major artery that goes through. It bifurcates into the left circumflex artery, which will affect the left posterior back of the heart. The left anterior descending heart is right in the front of the, of the, of the ventricle. And uh, this, is, this artery, it's a big, thick artery, and it's called the Widowmaker. That, it's the Widowmaker. This is the most common blocked artery in males. Well, maybe not males today, but in the old days, the left anterior descending artery was the major artery of... Of, uh, of clot, so left we called side. it the widow maker. The widow maker, we called it. Okay, so remember that. Left anterior descending artery is called the widow maker because it used to kill the husbands. Ah, the <laughs> Killed the husbands. Okay? On the right side, well, we got the right coronary artery, which will bifurcate into the marginal arteries, and these guys will go all over the anterior and posterior part of the, of the heart. Now, there are smaller arteries. They're tiny arteries, okay? Uh, we're not going to talk about the tiny ones. There's too many of them. These are the basic, basic arteries of the heart. The major ones that, when they're blocked, they can cause you to have a heart attack. The smaller ones don't necessarily cause heart attacks, okay? They get blocked by what, fat? Fat, plaques, cholesterol, you name it. And I just had a discussion with the doctor the other day, and I asked him, I said, when those coronary arteries get blocked, can you unblock them naturally? And he said no. He says the only thing you can do is stop the progression. But you can't stop it from already being damaged. You have to go in? You have to go in and scrape it out. Oh, don't scrape it. I'll go for God forbid. 
because you cause all kinds of clots. I mean, I mean uh, embolisms. But what uh, I thought that you can, it can get better. I mean, it can just you can lower it. But Kenny, my brother, I discussed it with him. He said that um, once you damage, once those plaques accumulate in the arteries, they will always accumulate. The question is, will you, can you get healthier and stop that from happening? You understand? Mm -hmm. And don't progress it. Um, naturally, we, uh, you know, believe it or not, we are starting to clot arteries when we're babies. And it's a natural phenomenon of clotting uh, uh, our arteries. Um, uh, based on um, certain criteria of cholesterol numbers, like the uh, the triglyceride levels, the total cholesterol levels, the HDLs, the LDLs, the VLDLs, and these and, and the LDLs stand for low density lipids, high density lipids, very low density lipids, and these all get together. The high density lipids are the good cholesterols. They actually what they do is they come out. Uh, in uh, in smaller numbers, uh, depending on your DNA and your genetics, how high your HDLs are, the higher they are, the better you're going to be. Uh, they come in like 60, 70, 80. This is unbelievable numbers. Uh, but uh, lower numbers like uh, 30 and 40. <clears throat> 45, I think, is the norm. It's a cutoff of being normal. Um, but uh, there, are, there are HDLs that are 20 and very low, and they're in danger of getting uh, a, a heart attack because there's nothing that's preventing the accumulation of cholesterol in the, in the inner walls of the, of the arteries. So understand that the progression can be stopped, but not the improvement. The only way you can improve it is by hopefully not getting a heart attack and just, you know, and, and, and trying to, uh, you know, uh, uh, live your life like that. But old people, elderly people, can live with very, remember, it's 100% open, right? So it gets 30% blocked, you don't really feel it. 40% blocked, you don't feel it. When people get to be 70% blocked and 80% blocked, they're more older people most of the time, and they don't feel it either. 80% blocked, 85% blocked, they don't feel it, why? Old people, why? Because they're not very active. So they don't feel the, the, the deprivation of, of the flow of blood. Remember, it's delivering oxygen to the muscle. If you use the muscle, you'll increase oxygen demand, and then you'll feel it. You understand that? Then you'll feel it. Some people are 75, 80% blocked, and they don't get, ever get a heart attack because they're 80 years old. They don't run around. You understand that? But if you're 70 or 60, and you have 80% blockage, believe me, you're gonna get that, that chest pain. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, a criteria, there's a criteria for, the, for having a heart attack, but I won't get into that. But um, uh, if you can get in there within 90 minutes of chest pain, you can save the heart muscle from being damaged. Remember, when a heart muscle dies, it turns white. Mm -hmm. And it's non-functional from that day on. If you can save the muscle, then you can, like my father had a heart attack, he didn't just hurt any of the muscles, he's fine. He, he had 90% blockage of his, of his, uh, of his uh, uh, left coronary artery and he was able to save his heart because he had the symptom, he went right to the hospital and he got it done. Because first time heart attacks, people don't know they're having a heart attack. They think it's indigestion or something. Remember, heartburn, there's a reason why we call it heartburn. It's right next to the heart. And when people get that pain right here, they think it's heartburn, but it could be a heart attack. They don't know. You understand that? So people sometimes don't survive that first heart attack because they go to sleep, then they wake up dead. They wake up dead. Guys, you're a terrible audience. <laughs> terrible. Okay, so you understand that? These are the arteries of the heart. And these are the major arteries of the heart. There are, there are smaller ones. They're what we call the collateral circulation of the heart. The collateral arteries that innervate the different places in the heart. When the other arteries don't work, these guys will work. The tiny little arteries of the heart. And you'll see that when you go into your book. There are tiny little arteries of the heart. 
and those are called the collateral arteries. They help feed the heart's muscle, but they're not the major ones. These are the major arteries of the heart. Okay? I understood. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, that's the coronary arteries. And, re and remember, that's where it's located. That's the entranceway, right back here, right behind the aortic the aorta, right? Behind the valve. That's where the oxygenated blood goes in. It's oxygenated blood here. It's the artery. Remember, arteries, and we'll discuss arteries next class. Artery, the big arteries of the body, okay? And I'll talk about the layers of the, of the arteries and, and veins, and we'll get into that really good thing, okay? Behind the aorta.